Welcome back to Autism Live. If you watch the show at all, you know that there are certain things that I just love. I love autism moms. I, I love communing with autism moms and connecting with them, but I gotta be honest that getting the opportunity to talk to an autism dad and an awesome autism dad is something that I will always walk on hot glass to do because I don't know, there's something particularly really thrilling and exciting for me when we have a dad who's willing to talk about the empowerment and, and some of the tough stuff that comes with being an autism dad. It just, I don't know, it's thrilling to me and I think it's important for everyone in the autism community here. It's a voice we don't get to hear often enough. So I'm thrilled, so excited, that we've got one of those awesome autism dads with us right now, joining us via Skype. Mark Schaefer is with us. And Mark, you're look at all the equipment you've got there. You're putting my studio to shame here. Tell, tell our audience where you're Skyping from. Well, actually, um, Shannon, I work at K-Wave 107.9, and it's a radio state station in Southern California. Uh, but today I'm calling you from Harvest Christian Fellowship in Riverside oh. because they were, I have a meeting out here. And so it just worked out. I called them up and said, I have to do this important Skype and you hook me up. And so I've got Shay outside the booth here who just hooked me all up and, and we're good. Well, I, and I thought you were at the radio station. I truly thought that's where you were. They've got a nice setup there. Well, I don't know if you know or have heard of Pastor Greg Laurie, but he is a very popular evangelist and does the Harvest Crusades, um, does them in Dallas, Texas. He always does it here in Orange County. And so he's got a great setup. He does a lot of radio work. Well, look at that. I'm impressed. Uh, so, Mark, I, I like, where do we start? You are an awesome uh, person in the community, you're, you're well known, you are someone who's always getting it done, and in addition to that, you're an autism dad. Let's start with talking about how that came to be. How did you find out that your son was on the autism spectrum? Well, it's, it's a great story. We found out back in 2003 when my son Justice was three years old, and um, you know, he wasn't hitting his milestones. And whenever I would talk to people, they'd say, oh, he's a boy and boys are just a little bit late. We went and took him in for, you know, all of his routine medical and um, the doctors didn't say anything. And so I was just like, nope, he'll talk when he talks. And, you know, I don't know why he's not making eye contact or tiptoe walking. I'm not worried about it. And um, one day I went outside and we had a neighbor across the street who was just two weeks younger than my son. And I walked out to go to the store and, and this little boy said to me, he goes, Hi, Mark. And I said, hi, Dutchie. And he goes, where are you going? I said, oh, I'm going to the grocery store. And he said, oh, my mommy goes to Safeway. And I go, well, that's where I'm going. And then I got in my car and, you know, said goodbye, got in my car, and I drove away. And I'm like, wow, justice can say milk, please. Yeah. There might be something wrong here. And my wife had had that inclination before, but we just didn't know where to go or where to turn. And so... Um, Luckily, I was working with uh, one of my sales reps. I was a sales manager at the time. And one of my sales reps' sister uh, did floor time for autistic children. And so I started talking with her. And she said, let me have my sister come over and just spend some time with your son. And she'll be able to tell you what's up. And so we had her sister come over. And she spent like 20 minutes with my son. And she said, yes, he's autistic. Yeah. And my world just started crashing around me, to be honest. And I think, you know, of course I can't know, but based on the things that I've heard over the years, I think this is harder for the dads. What do you think, Mark? Do you agree with that? It, it, I don't know if it was harder, it was different. Because when I found out that my son was autistic, I had, of course, all these questions. Well, what does that mean? What's his life going to look like? Am I ever going to, you know, have my star athlete that I wanted or my this or my that? You know, is he going to go to high school? Is he going to graduate? Will he have all of the, the things that I had growing up? And, um, and I hit this low so quick. I sunk into the worst depression I've ever had in my life. I'm not a depressed person, usually very happy, uh, but this just hit me so rock solid. Whereas my wife, when she found out, she said, oh my gosh, good, finally I have a diagnosis, I can get to work, I can figure this out, I can help him. Before now, I just thought maybe I was crazy because no one else saw it. 
So yeah. I hit my rock bottom right away. Um, and she hit hers about eight months later when we were um, at a, a clinic back in Philadelphia area. We were at the Family Hope Center, and we started getting all this information, and it was just overwhelming to her. And that's when she hit her low. She had a panic attack. We had to call an emergency, you know, uh, uh, ambulance to come and take her from the freeway um, to the hospital. But back at Family Hope Center, I was like, okay, great. You mean we can work hard and help him? Hey, I, I'll work hard. Yeah, I, I wonder if that's like a part of it that, uh, you know, that everybody plays their role in this and that for different partners, and because I, I don't want to generalize, that the story that you're telling is a very similar story that a lot of parents report. It's very similar to our story. I was like, you know, we got the diagnosis, now we can kick it into high gear. Well, my husband was like, what? And then right when I tripped and fell, my husband was like, no, we can do this. But I, but, and I, and I know that sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes, you know, the, the mom is in the what phase and the dad starts out in motion. But I wonder if that's one of the hallmarks of the families that make it through is that right when, when one person is like, I, I got to sit down for a minute, I can't take this, it's when the other one picks up the charge and says, I'll, I'll carry the load for this period of time um, until the other person can come back in. Because, man, I've heard that story so often, and it's typically from the couples who have survived. And you know the statistics. A lot of people don't. What do you yes. think has been the secret of you and your wife making it through? Um, well, I've already expressed to you, uh, I work at a Christian radio station. My faith in God has helped me so much through this. Um, I see the good in it. Uh, looking back now, my son is 18. We got him diagnosed when he was three. So we've been going at this for a long time. But looking back, I see the plan of God in it. And that plan is I've met so many people I would have never met. I've been able to help so many people I would have never been able to help. And, you know, I look at my son. I love him. I wouldn't trade him for the world, um, you know. That being said, is, is he still quirky? He's, he's very high functioning now. When we first got him diagnosed, he was low functioning. Uh, it was low functioning slash moderate. And now, you know, he's, he's high functioning. He's a senior in high school. He's going to graduate on time. Uh, we're blessed. So a big part of that was our mutual faith, um, a lot of prayer, a lot of friends praying. Uh, but other than that, really just working together. When your wife says, you know, we need to spend $14,000 on this hyperbaric oxygen chamber, you look at her sideways and you go, is this going to help our son? Yes, then let's do it. Well, and you we're going to be able to be that way. <clears throat> we're going to talk about some of the different things, choices that you guys made um, that helped you to get where you are um, and how you got to that place from being so depressed to being totally in faith and acceptance. We're going to talk about all that. But first, we're going to take a short break. And then we're going to come back to continue the story with this amazing autism dad. Stick with us.